Hi folks, it's Cheryl Ann Webster of SEAT and I'm here today with Jason. Hi Jason. Hello. Well, we were thinking about doing our Facebook challenge outside in the sun and in nature again, but what we discovered is we have no sun today. And we also heard from some of our viewers that we don't always have beautiful trees and beaches to be inspired by. So we've created one in our film studio here and inspired by Adrian Davies, we are drawing shadows. So Jason, I noticed that you have um, the sun shining. Yeah, this beautiful sun. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a lovely, very spotlight sort of sun. It does. In fact, we discovered it's actually hard to create shadows. We have all these film lights and not one of them created a shadow for us, but we found a flashlight that did. And we have this beautiful tree that is maintenance free and because it's synthetic. And we've got Jason who is an authentic artist and he <laughs> is drawing on canvas in what medium are you using? I am using chalk. Just standard chalk for like a blackboard? Yep. Huh. And so uh, why, why chalk? What do you like about chalk? Uh, it's very malleable and impermanent. Mm. The beautiful thing is if we were outside, you could go to town drawing with chalk anywhere and the second it rains it'd be all gone and you like that transient idea of the art just vanishing i do it's a more acceptable form of graffiti if anything oh people will not get as angry if you're drawing in a public space with chalk so you can pretty much art anywhere art anywhere i like that that may have to be the title for today so that it's transient and um, a friendly form of graffiti. And here today we've created these shadows of our synthetic plant. Mm. And you're, what are you doing for now? Going around the edge of them? Yeah, I'm just sort of doing some outlines on them until I figure out what I want to actually do. Mm. And are you already seeing shapes in there other than the shapes of our artificial leaves? Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Especially with these solid shadows, you get a little of uh, like a bleed in the shadow, so you get multiple layers. I don't know if you can actually see them right now, but ah, well, Diane, you're uh, you've jumped online. Nice to see you here, Diane. Can you? Sorry, Diana, can you see clearly these lovely blurred and bleed lines and the solid lines? Give us a thumbs up if you can. There, we're hoping folks can see the colors as well that we put in there. So Jason, you said to me earlier that you used to do community work with the chalk. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, a friend of mine and I would uh, just go and raid dollar stores for all the chalk that they had. Mm -hmm. And then we would find a, a good public spot with a lot of foot traffic and a good section of concrete to draw on. And then we just put a big pile of chalk on the ground and invite everybody who walked by to make some art. Mm. And, and did people join in? Yeah, lots of people joined in. Um, it was a good, a good reminder that anyone can do art. Yeah. Because people who would always often stop by and say, "Oh, I'm not an artist, but uh, I'll, I'll draw something anyway," and then they'd, like, two hours later, they'd still be drawing and having a blast. Wow! So it was quite therapeutic for them to join in and realize that, uh, in fact, we need a different word for art. I think because when we think of art, it can be anything from fine art of the masters right down to internal expression that people wouldn't necessarily perceive as a finished art piece. So, but you're saying that the therapeutic process of being part of that and giving permission to just draw anything and knowing it's transient really inspired people. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It often just takes people doing art to realize that they actually can do it. Now, isn't that true? So sometimes you have to do art to realize you can do art. And here we've even created the sunshine when we <laughs> had no sunshine. Yeah, <laughs> we can do anything. We can do anything. We're just gonna come in closer and see what you're up to here. Now we apologize for the wiggly camera. The tripod that we've been struggling with on the beach when there's no flat land decided that it had enough and so it's now a bipod instead <laughs> of a tripod because one of its little feet broke today so we're we're balancing away here i 
I'm noticing too the sounds the chalk's making as it's dragging across the the canvas. That's quite engaging, that sound. Yeah, it is. The other good thing I like about chalk is it's almost like uh, charcoal. You can smudge it and everything. Mm-hmm. It's a very tactile piece. So for all our viewers watching while we're doing live or after during the recording, do let us know what images do you see in this? What shapes are coming up for you? And of course, as Jason says, this is a very affordable way to explore. We're using canvas because we had it, but you could just as easily be drawing on the sidewalk and then you've got the gray background or the black background. And the chalk is just from the dollar store. Yep. Can you show us your bag of chalk? Yep. <laughs> you can see it. I think there's even a leaf in it from the last time I did it outside. Hey, see? Art and nature stays together. There's some big old pieces of chalk. It's hard to see what color these are. How do you know yeah. what color they are? Uh, this chalk has been around the block a few times, so it's all sort of jumbled together at the moment. So. Usually it's a lot more clear as to what they are. Uh, right now I'm just sort of guessing. Well, and I guess it doesn't really matter if it's a different one to what you're expecting, huh? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Gonna bring us a bit closer to the art piece. Now, of course, you've explained that it's transient, so of course it can be washed away if you're drawing outside, but what if we want to keep this piece? What's your technique for keeping a chalk pastel or straightforward chalk on canvas or paper? Do you have a technique for stopping it smudging once it's completed? That I am not sure of. Because mm, you're the transient guy, right? Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I've used a few different things. There's some fixatives out there. They're a little smelly, but aerosol fixatives that can work really well over your finished piece. And then it holds those pastel particles and chalk particles in place. But also when we were in art school and didn't have the money to buy fixatives, we would use um, skimmed milk and water in a spray bottle. Really? And for, yeah, and for some reason it actually worked. And another favorite is hairspray. Again, it seems to have to be aerosol to get good coverage, but right. really it's just fixing them in place. Shall we move the plant and see what it looks like? I think so. Um, let's move her. Wow, what a difference! <laughs> so as we move <laughs> the plant, which we can do here, instead of moving <laughs> the art. So if you're out in nature, don't try moving the tree, try moving the artwork. <laughs> <laughs> but for us, we were able to move the plant and see all these amazing colors just pop up. Hi, Sue. Nice to have you here. Thanks for dropping by. Look at that. Now, what if you were to turn the piece now that you can? Yeah. I mean, you could also turn the sun in our situation. But turn it this way or see the plant from the base. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. What way do you like it? Or should I say, what way speaks to you more? I think I like it this way, the way I, I did it, actually. Mm-hmm. It's pretty neat. And you know what I'm going to ask next? The dreaded question. What's okay. its title? Oh, boy. Um, the Shadow World. Ooh, The Shadow World. So one of the reasons we're always asking about a title is because it is part of the process, is going from that free-flowing, really expressive piece back into the cognitive process and applying language. And in art therapy terms, we call that neurosequential. But for everybody else who doesn't won't need to worry about all that, it really is taking your art piece and adding a title to it bringing it into the now, so the shadow world, and then maybe we'll set Jason some more homework and have him write a poem or a piece of prose around the shadow world. And then from there, you could even create another piece of artwork from your 
written piece. Yeah, exactly. Are you up for that challenge? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of life. <laughs> All right, Jason, so did you enjoy the process? Oh, I loved it. Mm -hmm. And what kind of challenge <laughs> would you like to set for people on this day seven of your shadow world? Um, I would say make something impermanent. Mm, impermanent artwork, I like it. All right, so there's your challenge, folks, day seven. I'm gonna just finish up with you seeing that piece of one, the shadow world one last time. And our beautiful sun over there, created by a flashlight, and our synthetic tree just there. So remember, if you are not anywhere near the beach or out in the woods or having nature surrounding you, maybe you're busy with work and home, you can create your world right there in your very own home with whatever's around you. And as Jason says, create some art this week and make it impermanent art. Allow it to come, allow it to go. And remember to share with us your creation as you see fit. You can post it in the comments below. You can add it to our page. You can add it to our group. It's all up to you. We look forward to seeing you again for day eight. And uh, this is Cheryl Ann Webster and Jason of SEAT, Canadian International Institute of Art Therapy. And you can find us at SEAT.org. C-I-I-A-T dot O-R-G. Bye. Bye. <laughs>